Empire system, learning through experiences. Etymology. The English term empirical derives from the Greek word empiria, which is cognate with and translates to the Latin word experientia, from which we have derived the word experience and the related experiment. What is empiricism? Empiricism is a philosophical belief that states your knowledge of the world is based on your experiences, particularly your sensory experiences. According to the empiricists, our learning is based on our observations and perception. Knowledge is not possible without experience. In the philosophy of science, it emphasizes evidence, especially as discovered through experiments. All the hypotheses and theories are tested against observations of the natural world rather than resting solely on priori reasoning, intuition, and revelation. There are three types of empiricism. First is the classical empiricism. Second is the radical empiricism. The third one is the moderate empiricism. Looking back on the history of empiricism, the first empiricists in Western philosophy were the Sophists, who rejected such rationalist speculation about the world as a whole and took humanity and society to be the proper objects of philosophical inquiry. For the Stoics, the human mind is at birth a clean slate which comes to be stuck with concepts by the sensory impingement of the material world upon it. The empiricism of the Epicureans, for them, human concepts are memory images, the mental residues of previous sense experiences, and knowledge is as empirical as the ideas of which it is composed. There are many empiricists that became famous for their knowledge about the empiricism philosophy. The first one is Francis Bacon. Though he did not deny the existence of a prior knowledge, he claimed that in effect, the only knowledge that is worth having is empirically based knowledge of the natural world. Next is Thomas Hobbes. For him, all genuine knowledge is a priori, a matter of rigorous deduction from definitions. The third one is Bishop George Berkeley. He applied Locke's empiricism about concepts to refute Locke's account of human knowledge of the external world. The next one is David Hume. He argued that there can be no more to the concepts of body, mind, and causal connection than what occurs in the experiences from which they ar arise. But the most notable empiricist is John Locke. He examined how we acquired ideas through his book, An Essay Concerning Human Understanding. He held that, at birth, the human mind is a blank slate or a tabula rasa, empty of ideas. We gradually acquire knowledge about the world from information our senses bring to us. Simple ideas become compound ideas as we combine them, and this in turn become more complex through comparison, reflection, and generalization. Now that we've already finished discussing the basics, historical backgrounds, and the famous empiricists about the said philosophy, we will now go to the empiricists' viewpoint in terms of education. John Locke's Some Thoughts Concerning Education is a collection of musings on the topic of education. Locke does not present a systematic theory of education and the work reads more like an instruction manual than a philosophical text. And today, we will use Locke's book as a foundation of education in the viewpoint of an empiricist. Aims of Education Locke is convinced that moral education is more important than other kinds of education. In an empiricist view, the aim is not to create a scholar but a virtuous man. More particularly, the aim of education is to instill what Locke calls the principle of virtue, namely the ability to subvert one's immediate appetites and desires to the dictates of reason. According to Locke, the goal of education is to create a person who obeys reason instead of passion. The Empiricist's Curriculum Locke's curriculum includes 
conversational foreign language learning, especially French, higher mathematics, history, physical education, games, and athletics were also encouraged. He always believed that this foundation would achieve the educational goal of cultivating ethical individuals and holistically developed individuals. Locke's learning environment includes child-friendly environment. The children should be able to breathe fresh air and relax their minds during the learning process. Children should never be forced to learn when they are not in the mood. They should never be beaten or spoken to harshly. They should not be lectured but should be engaged in a conversations. Methods of instruction Learning through experiences or experiential learning Imposing rewards and punishments Moral training or teaching by rules Academic instruction such as in reading, writing, and arithmetic should be slow and cumulative Language should be taught through conversations and not through the memorization of the rules of grammar and lastly, scientific methods are encouraged. Here is Locke's proposed educational system using the empiricist viewpoint and we can see that it starts from simple ideas then it becomes compound ideas as we combine them until it becomes more complex through time. The advantage of the system is that it does not only teach us all of the most useful subjects but it also teaches them in a way that follows the natural development of a child's mind. For an empiricist, learning should be a gradual process, enjoyable, a form of recreation, not forced among the students, downplaying the role of rules, holistic, and following the natural development of a child's mind. Using the empiricist type of education, what should we expect from our students? The child will be holistically developed. The child will be morally trained and ethically cultivated. The child will develop manual skills. And the child's mind will be able to relax and refresh after it has been worn out from intensive study. And this is Empiricism, Learning Through Experiences. Presented by Aimidon V. Pasman from 2-5 Bachelor of Filipino Education. Thank you!